Thank you so much for watching our record of the third national conference on Barack Obama's missing birth certificate and personal records and college and school records. It's been an exciting time for us, even though the weather wasn't particularly helpful. But the conference went on and the record is here for you to see. Let's have a quick summary of what's happened in the last two days. First of all, in my writing as a political columnist, and I predicted that the birth certificate issue would continue to grow. Secondly, the birth certificate issue, the so-called birther issue as the mainstream media have called it, is not going away. The writing which I've done and which I continue to do focuses attention on President Obama's missing birth certificate and I have been a catalyst for growing this movement and for keeping it vibrant and alive. Now that I'm a candidate for the Republican Party's presidential nomination, I will continue to make every effort to see that the birth certificate issue is brought before the Republican Party's primary voters. Next, the birth issue and the birther movement is growing. We started out with a handful of people and today we're over 100 million strong. Now we don't have meetings and we don't have a building and we don't have a lobbyist in Washington or a high-powered law firm, but we have the momentum, momentum of the sincerity and commitment and concern of the American people behind our efforts. And that's a very powerful force. Next, the media are paying increasing attention. In this first segment, I'd like to talk about the despicable racism of Miami Herald columnist Leonard Pitts. As we were assembling here in Washington for the Third National Conference, Leonard Pitts launched a racist diatribe against birthers. In other words, Mr. Pitts was attacking over 100 million Americans, calling us racist and demanding that we start using the N-word because he said that was our real motivation. Well, Mr. Pitts, you're wrong. And Mr. Pitts, you're race baiting and playing the race card for Barack Obama as a surrogate for the White House is going to backfire. And it's going to backfire big time. The American people are not racists. They voted for Barack Obama in good faith, but unfortunately they were misled by the media. The media didn't probe Obama's past. When I went to Hawaii in 2008, I was the first investigative editor to ever get to Hawaii with a specific purpose of investigating and looking into Obama's past. All the media had done was take pictures of Obama in a bathing suit going for a swim. That was the sum total of their investigative coverage of Mr. Obama's qualifications for office. And I didn't go there with a racist dimension. I went there as a scholar with a historical dimension. I went there to find out the truth and to search for the facts. And that's what I've always done in the past seven years of writing about Barack Obama. So for Mr. Pitts to accuse me and all those who read my material and the tens and now hundreds of millions of Americans who have legitimate concerns about Mr. Obama's origins, to call us racists is despicable. Mr. Pitts is a disgrace to the Miami Herald He's a disgrace to print journalism. He's a disgrace to the state of Florida. And he's a disgrace to Barack Obama. I can assure President Obama that as long as he allows people like Leonard Pitts to defend him and to demand that the N-word be used to describe the so-called birther movement, that Pitts is going to ensure, that is, guarantee the defeat of Barack Obama in 2012. So, Mr. Pitts, you owe the American people an apology. We have legitimate questions, we have legitimate doubts, we have legitimate concerns about who Barack Obama is, where he was born, and how he was born. And he has made conflicting and opaque statements about all of these issues. It is not wrong, and it is demonstrably not racist, to want to know about the qualifications of the president. I think you owe the American people a deep, sincere, humble apology 
Mr. Pitts. You need to look into your soul, find out why you would try to raise the ugly flag of racism and try and spread the N-word as a means of demeaning and disparaging the birther movement. It's a disgraceful episode in the history of the Miami Herald, and you should be ashamed of yourself.